Hello and welcome to our Sunday School class for the kindergarten first and second graders at Central Baptist Church or whoever you are out there. And my name is Jill Blalock and I teach kindergarten first and second grade Sunday School at Central Baptist Church in Eureka, Missouri. And today we're going to do our April 5th lesson, which is Palm Sunday this year, 2020. And we are going to talk about the stories leading up to Jesus dying on the cross. So that's what we're doing today. Um, before we start, just like every time we um, have Sunday school in our class, we're going to pray. So before we pray, you might want to write down your prayer requests in your prayer journal. That's where we write ours down every week. <clears throat> and you're going to get with your family and you're going to be able to pray. And um, once I say let's pray and then I'll finish the prayer. So quiet your hearts and your minds. Put your hands together. Close your eyes. Think about God. Let's pray. Lord God, we just give you all the praise and glory for everything that you've done. Please forgive us of the things that we do that are wrong, that are called sin. Help us to do better next time. We thank you for each child watching, Lord. We pray that you would be with them. Help us help them to learn what they need to know from this lesson today. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those who are sick. Help them to get better, Lord. Um, we pray, Lord, that you would be with those who are helping people to get better. And just protect them and give them everything that they need to do that. We pray, Lord, that you would put your words in our mouth, put your thoughts in our head, put your song in our heart, Lord, and help us to know what we need to know from this lesson today. I pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Okay, so once we pray, we get our Bibles out, and today we are in the New Testament again because we're talking about all the stories leading up to Jesus dying on the cross, and we're in the, one of the four Gospels. You're either in... Luke, if you're doing the read together verse, my kindergarten friends and people who want to read with others instead of by themselves, the girls and the boys are in John 19. So take your Bible. We're in the New Testament, so we're going to cut our Bible in half. And then we're going to cut our Bible in half again. And we're in the New Testament. I landed in Matthew. So if I wanted to go to Luke or um, John, I would need to go a little bit further. And then you find the big number is the chapter number. So if you're looking for the chapter number, like in this number, it looks like this. It's a special color. And then the other number behind it is a little tiny number that you can't even see from the camera because it's so small. Those are the verse numbers. So you look yours up and you put your um, bookmark in there and you will be ready to read when it's your turn. So before we start, we're going to review the four eggs that we've already done. We did three last week in Sunday School, and then um, the fourth egg was our children's message today. So if you go back and you look at the April 5th children's time message about thirsting for God, that egg opening is in there for egg number four. But we're going to do all of those right now, and then you'll be able to know what was in egg number four. So get your eggs out if you have them. If you don't, you can watch my eggs. And we're going to see exactly what are in all of these eggs this week. So egg number one, get your egg number one ready. This is the first egg. Open it up, see what's inside. That's right, it's the donkey. The donkey is in egg number one. There's my little donkey. There he is. So the donkey's in egg number one. And why is the donkey in egg number one? What happened with the donkey? So in our lesson, that we did two weeks ago, we learned that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And when he did that, the people took their coats and something else, do you remember what else they took? And put it down on the ground. That's right, it was palm branches. And this was your craft. Your craft for this week was the Hosanna palm branch. And you had little circles that you could color or different things that happened in our stories of leading up to Jesus dying on the cross. And they would wave these in the air and saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's what they were saying. And we found out last week that the word Hosanna means please save us. That's what it means, please save us. They were asking Jesus to save them. And they thought they were asking to save them from the Romans, but really God meant that they were gonna be saved from all of their sin. That's right. So that's what was happening last week. So the next egg, the next egg, egg number two, listen to that one. 
What does that sound like? Yeah. Open it up. Silver coins. And I don't know what's in your egg, but I have three silver coins in my egg. And they are called dimes. Here they are. One, two, three. And these dimes help me remember how many silver coins Judas got for betraying Jesus. Remember, Judas is the betrayer. He's the one that told the enemies of Jesus where Jesus was so that they could come and capture him. And Judas got 30 pieces of silver. So my dimes help me remember that because each dime is worth 10 cents. And 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30. So that's how I remember what Ju Judas got for betraying Jesus. That was egg number two. So egg number three is what our lesson was mostly about last week. Do you remember what's in egg number three? Let's look. That's right, the cup. The cup was in egg number three because Jesus had the last supper with his disciples. And he had the cup and he had some special bread that they ate. So those were the two things that they did during the Last Supper. And when they did that, the bread and the cup reminded us of things about Jesus. They were symbols, symbols for Jesus' blood in the cup and Jesus' body with the bread. And we learned from the verse in Isaiah 53, verse 5, that many things about the bread, it being pierced and having stripes on it and being broken, those are all things that remind us of how, what happens to Jesus' body when he um, is placed on the cross and he's dying. So those are the things that the bread reminds us of. So now let's look at what's in egg number four. If you watch the children's time lesson today, you'll remember that in egg number four is the praying hands. The praying hands help us remember that right after that Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives where there was a garden that Jesus would go and pray. And he would pray there a lot. And this was right after dinner, so it's kind of, it's, it's nighttime. So they're praying all night until Judas comes to betray Jesus, which is in the middle of the night or the early morning hours. So they're there praying and this was the children's time lesson where we learned about being thirsty for God because in Jesus' prayer, Jesus prays for his disciples and he prays for us to be one with God. And that's when we did the science experiment with the polymers and we filled them all with distilled water. And even though they were all filled with the same water, they still didn't look like one until we poured all the distilled water over them. And then it looked like one and we could clearly see the message underneath the polymer. So be sure to watch your children's time message for today. So egg number four is the praying hands. So those are the first four eggs. And in this lesson, we're going to do eggs five through 11. And we're saving the last egg for next Sunday's special lesson. So we're going to start with um, figuring out a special word that has to do with most of the eggs and most of the um, information in our lesson today. And that word is prophecy. So all of these things that we're going to learn about have something in the Old Testament where somebody predicted, somebody told about what was going to happen in the future when Jesus was going to die. And to tell about this before it even happened. So that's what a prophecy is. So when we're doing this lesson, you're also going to notice that a lot of the things in this lesson are really sad. Because this is the lesson where Jesus dies on the cross. And so we're going to be pretty, very sad. We're going to learn about some sad things that happen. But we have to remember that even though Jesus died on Good Friday, on Friday he died, Sunday is coming. Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday is coming. And the good news about Resurrection Sunday is that Jesus wins over death and sin. Death and sin. It's like, yay! A two pom-pom cheer. That's what it is, a two pom pom cheer, winning over sin and death. So even though these things are gonna be sad, you need to remember that in the win end, Jesus wins, okay? So this is what prophecy is about. So we're gonna have some prophecies in our lesson that tell something in the Old Testament pointing to Jesus in the New Testament. It's kind of like when we talked about it at Christmas time, 
when the wise men came into Jerusalem and they went to King Herod and they wanted to know where the Messiah was going to be born. And King Herod was like, I don't know, let's go, let's go ask all of my, my wise people. And they did and they said, oh, well, back here in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the, in the, in the writings of the, the Bible, it says that Jesus, that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. So that was a prophecy. So some of these things that we're going to read today are prophecies about things that will happen in the story of Jesus dying on the cross. And while we do this lesson today, we are going to do um, a little part that has to do with some symbols because a lot of the things in our story have to do with symbols of things that we learn about um, while we are uh, learning about the lesson. Like, like for example, that egg number one that had the donkey in it. Do you remember what the donkey was a symbol of? It was a symbol of peace, that's right. Very good. Because Jesus didn't come as a mighty warrior. He came in, in peace. And then even like the bread. The bread was the symbol of what? That's right. Jesus' body. And the cup was a symbol of, right, Jesus' blood. So all these symbols help us know something that's going to happen in our story. So I have created for you to pay attention to our lesson today. I've created the crack the resurrection egg code. So there's going to be symbols on our screen and we're going to write down a letter that's going to go with each one of those because the other thing I did is I have some secret messages, some truths from today's lesson and you're going to figure out which letters go on the line. I, I gave you some hints to which letters go on the line so you'll know what this truth is and they're all good news. Every single one of them is good news. So there's um, one for second grade, first grade, kindergarten, and of course, extra credit. There's always extra credit. So or you can do just for your grade or you can do all four of them, it doesn't matter. But pay attention as we go through the lesson to see where the symbols are so we can write down what letter is gonna go with that. Because we are going to crack the resurrection egg code today. That's what we're gonna do. So get out your resurrection eggs if you have them, if you don't, you're going to just listen to mine. And we've been going over the first four. Make sure you have them right there. And we're going to go to egg number five. So we've done one through four. And we're going to go to egg number five. So if you have egg number five, get it out. Mine hardly makes any noise. Let's open it up. See what's in egg number five. There it is. The leather strap. That's, this is my leather strap. There's a picture of a leather strap. This is more like a whip. That's what we're going to find out. Why is that in egg number five? So before we do that, look at your crack the code paper. I see a heart. What letter goes there? Very good, an E. And I see a moon. What goes next to the moon? An M. So write down the E and the M. So we'll have those special symbols to go back later and look at the other papers. Okay, so why is there a leather whip in this story, in this egg? Let's look at our read together verse. This is our read together verse for our read together friends are looking in Luke 22, verse 63. So get your finger ready and put it on that very first word and we'll say it together. Are you ready? There were men guarding Jesus. They began laughing at him and beating him. Wow, they were beating him. That's where this leather strap comes in. They were hitting him with a whip, with a piece of leather, and they were doing it 39 times. Ouch, that is got to hurt. That's gonna be terrible. That's just an awful thing to happen. So why are they doing this? Because they are, this is the verse that goes with Isaiah 53 verse 5 where it says with his wounds are his stripes we are healed when you hit hit with something like a piece of leather like it like a whip it's going to leave a big line on you and so that's going to be the stripes remember the bread and the stripes on it these are the wounds that Jesus is going through just for us just to help us take take our punishment for our sin so Jesus is taking the punishment from our sins from the whip. That's one of the things that happened to him. So let's see what else they did. Find egg number six. Find it, open it up. What's in egg number six? 
There it is, a crown of thorns. A crown of thorns is in egg number six. Maybe you just have thorns. If you made this in preschool at our church, we just put thorns in there when we did um, our preschool. So the other thing you need to do is take out your crack the coat paper and next to the sun and the donut. You write the S and the Y. S and the Y. So those are the two letters on this slide. So the crown of thorns, this is our girls first. So girls, you get ready to read your verse and you can pause the video and read your verse and then I'll read it for us, okay? Okay. John 19, two says, the soldiers twisted thorns together to make a crown. They put it on Jesus's head, then they put a purple robe on him. So the soldiers were making fun of Jesus because Jesus was called the king of the Jews and Jesus was supposed to be the Messiah, the King of the Jews, just like in the Old Testament when they called Jesus the Messiah. So he was being made fun of, and they've even put a purple robe on him to say that he was the king, but he couldn't do anything to save himself. So that's why the crown of thorns is in egg number six. So now we're going to get out egg number seven. Egg number seven. Mine doesn't even shake. Okay, egg number seven is the nails. The nails are in egg num number seven. Mine are all together. They're all stuck together there. You may just have one nail, but there might be three. Because when we had this lesson last year, I brought three really big nails, like the one in the picture there. Those are the nails I bought, brought to Sunday school that we could touch. So before we go on, get your, get your um, code paper, and we're going to write down the D and the end. Those are our letters for this slide. And this is the boy verse. So boys, you get ready to read with your family and pause the video and then Miss Jill reads your verse for everyone else. Okay, John 19 verse 18 says, they nailed Jesus to the cross. Two other men were crucified with him, one on each side of him, and Jesus was in the middle. So just like our little picture here where there's three crosses, Jesus is in the middle. Jesus was on the cross and what they did is they would lay the cross down like this and put Jesus on here, nail him, and then pick it up and put it in the ground. Not very pleasant, very ouchy. And that's just another thing Jesus went through. He took our punishment for us, for our sins. So that's one of the things that happened to him. And when these, these things happen, the leather strip, the crown of thorns, and these nails are all things that are hurting Jesus, just like it says in that Isaiah 53, 5 verse. He was crushed. That means he's like broken. Crushed for our iniquities, our sin. Upon him was the chastisement. That's that fancy Nancy word for punishment that brought us peace. So Jesus is being punished for our sin, even though he was sinless without any sin. So. What we need to remember about this is that Jesus is doing this for us. Jesus is taking the sin and the punishment for us. So now we're going to move on to the next, the next egg, which is egg number eight. So find egg number eight, and that is going to be on the next page here, egg number eight. Let's see what's inside there. Egg number eight, there it is. That's more like it. Dice. There's dice in there. And if you've got your code paper, find the smiley face is going to be the O, and the um, ice cream cone is going to be the I. So those are the things that we're going to write down on our code paper. Why would there be dice in this egg? This is real interesting. Listen to what happens when Jesus is dying on the cross. It's my turn to read my verses. My verses are John 19, 23 through 25. It says, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes. They divided them into four parts. Each soldier, soldier got one part. All that was left was Jesus's long inner robe. It did not have any seams and it was made out of one piece of cloth from top to bottom. And they said, let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's cast lots. Let's roll some dice. Game of chance to see who gets it. This happened so the scriptures would come true 
it says they divided up my clothes among them they cast lots for what I was wearing that is Psalms 22 18 so hundreds of years earlier the psalmist the person who wrote Psalm 22 God had them write down that they divided up my clothes among them they cast lots for what I was wearing because there were four soldiers and there were five pieces of clothes so each soldier got one and there was one left over so somebody's gonna get an extra piece of clothing and so that's why they did that so they wouldn't have to tear it apart so they divided them up so that's just another amazing way something in the Old Testament tells about something in the New Testament with Jesus so now Jesus is up on the cross and the criminals are up there with him and that isn't the darkest part of our story terrible things happen while Jesus is on the cross and if we had time we could read all about them did you know it got dark for three hours in the middle of the day from like I think it was from noon to 3 p.m. when Jesus died at 3 p.m. and it was also um, after, when Jesus died after he said it is finished into your hands I commit my spirit when he he said to God that he, he had died there was an earthquake and there was a, a big curtain in the temple that separated the people from the Holy of Holies where the priests were and it ripped in half I mean just crazy things happened. people were so scared the disciples just scattered everyone was afraid so if you want to find out more about that look in your my Easter book about Jesus that I sent you and in the back where you find Jesus on the cross, there's other verses that you can read all about those things. Just amazing things. And when you're older, you'll probably study those a little bit more in your other class. So we're going to remember that Jesus died on a Friday. People call it Good Friday. And the Jewish leaders um, killed Jesus. They didn't really want them to hang on the cross because the next day was Saturday. That was their Sabbath day. That was the day they worshipped. And they didn't want these people on the crosses anymore. So they wanted them to be taken down. So the Jewish leaders um, sent the soldiers to take down the criminals that were up there. Now the two other criminals, they weren't even dead yet. They had to break their legs that they would die. But Jesus was already dead. And so when they saw that he was dead, they wanted to make sure he was dead. So what is in the next egg is how they did that. And they're going to do this because in the Psalm 3420, it says the Lord watches over all his bones talking about the Messiah not one of them will be broken so they didn't break any of Jesus's bones but get out egg number nine and let's see what's in egg number nine that's right it's a spear a spear is in egg number nine because they're gonna the Roman soldier is gonna take this big long spear and Jesus is still hanging up there on the cross pretty far off the ground and he's going to take that spear and he's going to put it into his side. Into his side and it's going to pierce him. Remember how the bread had all the holes in it because he was pierced? Remember how it said in Isaiah 53 he was pierced? Because the Roman soldier is going to pierce him. And when he does that, blood and water come out. So when they do that, um, that's how they know he's dead. It says in John 1934, instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers stuck his spear into Jesus' side and right away blood and water flowed out, flowed out of him. And that's how they knew he was dead. So before we go to the next slide, I want you to take your, your paper and write an L next to the lightning bolt and a T next to the tree. And then you'll be ready for the next slide. So the next, next one, shake it egg number 10 nothing do you think there's nothing in here Good. let's look let's look okay look at what it is it's a piece of cloth that's why we didn't hear it it's the linen cloth and let's see why there's a piece of linen cloth in here you can get your your code paper out and next to the square you can write the c and next to the umbrella you can write the u for our code paper and listen to what it says in John 19 38 through 40 about why there's cloth in there because they're going to have to wrap Jesus's body when they take him down off the cross it says later Joseph asked Pilate for Jesus's body Joseph was from a town called Arimathea he was a follower of Jesus but he followed Jesus secretly because he was afraid of the Jewish leaders 
After Pilate gave him permission, Joseph came and took the body away. Nicodemus was with Joseph. He was the man who had earlier visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought some mixed spices that weighed about 75 pounds. The two men took Jesus' body, wrapped it with the strips of linen cloth and the spices mixed in. And that way is how the Jews buried people. So Joseph is a rich man from Arimathea. He's somebody that has been following Jesus. And Nicodemus, do you remember the story about Nicodemus when we did Nick at night? And we made this little craft picture and he had all the questions. And that's where Jesus says the John 3, 16 verse. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That was a story that we did in Sunday school a few weeks ago. So Nicodemus is there and um, Joseph is there and they are taking Jesus' body off the cross. And this is really important. This is another time when something in the Old Testament is going to point to Jesus in the New Testament. Because Jesus is going to be buried in the tomb that Joseph had for himself. The rich man had for himself. And it says in Isaiah 53, 9, it says, he, being the Messiah, the chosen one of God, he was given a grave with those who were evil. So he died with the criminals. And his body was buried in the tomb of a rich man, just like this. He was killed even though he hadn't done anyone any harm and he had never lied to anyone. So those are the, the prophecies, the things in the Old Testament pointing to what's happening to Jesus in the New Testament. Those are the exact things that happened. So. Now we're ready for the last egg that we're going to open today, egg number 11. So get your egg number 11 out and listen to this. Wow, that sounds, sounds loud. Let's see what's in egg number 11. There it is. Mine has a pretty big rock in it. Yeah, why would there be a rock in there? Well, before we, write, we find out, let's take our crack the code paper and next to the apple, let's put an A and the rainbow, let's put an R. So we have that all filled out for finding out our truths from the lesson. So why would there be a rock in this egg? Well, our picture shows us this big stone is what they would roll in front of the tomb. Remember when Lazarus died and they had a big stone and they had to roll it away and they thought it was going to smell bad? They did that so that it wouldn't smell bad. So listen to what happened when Joseph put Jesus in his tomb. This is in Matthew 27. 59 to 61, it says, Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He placed it in his own new tomb that was cut out of a rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb. Then he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there across from the tomb. And that's real important for next week's story, okay? Because they you know, Mary knows. And her friend Mary, they know where Jesus is in the tomb. But the enemies of Jesus didn't want anyone to come and steal Jesus' body. So another thing that happened to that big stone is in Matthew 27, 65 to 66, where it says, Pilate, Pilate is the, that's his actual name. Pilate is the, the man who was in charge who could say that Jesus was going to die on the cross, that he could be crucified. He was like the person in charge, like the governor or something like that. He was the guy in charge. So the, he's giving all the orders. So he says in in verse 65 of Matthew 27, take some guards with you, Pilate answered. Go and make the tomb as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure. They put a royal seal on the stone and placed some guards on duty. So they sealed it up and they put guards there so no one could come taking Jesus' body out. But not only did they did put the stone there, the guards and the seal were there to help no one take his body. So. Now, we've opened all the eggs we're going to open for today because we're leaving that last egg for next Sunday. That's going to be the Sunday when we open the last egg. And so now, at the end of the lesson, when we get all finished, you can take your code and you can figure out the good news that we're going to learn from this. Good news about some things like Jesus being God's son, God is in control, things like that. That it's Friday. Jesus is dead. He's in the tomb. But guess what? Sunday is coming. Sunday is the day that Jesus rises from the dead. That's the day that we're going to celebrate next week. And that's the good news part of this whole story. But the best news is 
what happens for us is that Jesus took our punishment so that we can be forgiven. Jesus took our place to be the sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God. So he took our punishment. And remember in Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's the, how we can be forgiven. And that's where we come to our ABCs of becoming a Christian. That first letter, A, is admitting. Admitting, that means saying, yep, we've done things that are wrong. We are sinners. We need to repent. That means we need to turn around and go completely the other direction and walk towards God instead of away from Him. We need to ask forgiveness. For the wages of sin is death, it says in Romans 3.23. And that um, we all come, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, for we are all not able to do exactly what God wants us to do. We are not able ourselves to get rid of that sin in our life, just like when we had the, the lesson about forgiveness in children's time. So that's why we need to admit with our A. And the next letter is the B, and that's the part where we need to believe, believe that Jesus is God's Son, and accept His free gift of salvation, and accept His forgiveness. Because it says in Romans 5, 8, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And C is confess. Tell other people. Confess your faith in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. That's how we tell other people that we are part of God's kingdom work. We um, come forward in church and we say we want to be baptized, things like that. Those are the ways that we tell other people that we are part of God's kingdom work through salvation. And this is the verse that I pray for you all every day, that you will confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead so you can be saved. That's the best part of all this. That's the part that helps us go to live in heaven with God after, after this life is over. So that's the good news, the good news part of this. And you know what? When you do that, did you know that the angels in heaven rejoice? They go, yay! Now, I don't know if they have pom-poms, but I know they go, yay! Because it says that the angels rejoice in heaven when one person becomes part of God's kingdom's work through salvation. And so those are the ABCs that you need to remember about becoming part of God's kingdom work. So even though it's sad here at the end of today's lesson because Jesus is dead, he's in the tomb, the good news is in three days, Jesus is going to rise from the dead. He's going to win over death and sin because it's Friday. But Sunday is coming. Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday is coming when Jesus shows up out of the grave and he wins over death and sin. That's the best part. So to find out more things about that, more truths from your lesson, you can crack your Easter code. You can get out your papers and fill out all the letters and find out some good news about Jesus and about this lesson. You can take your, your coloring book, my Easter book about Jesus, and you can uh, color some pages in here about the stories. You can read it, read it to your, your parents, your younger brothers and sisters, your older brothers and sisters. You can look up the scriptures at the bottom and those will help you know more about the story. And we are all the way up to page nine. We are all the way up to page nine. And next week we will do page 10. Did you know I even gave one of these books to my mother? And she said she was going to color in it. So I'm just going to say hi to my mom. Hi, mom. Thanks for, for watching with us. And thank you for watching with us. We are so glad you are here, and we invite you back next week to hear the greatest story in the Bible, the story of Jesus rising from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. It was dark, and then the light comes. I love this picture. So you come back next week, and we will um, see you back here at Miss Jill's house and um, look up some more verses and be ready to learn about the wonderful truths from God's true word about the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus coming to life again. So thanks for watching. Come back and we will pray right now and then we'll send you off. So quiet your hearts and your minds.
Thank you, dear Lord, for this wonderful lesson. Thank you for God's true word, the Bible. Thank you for talking to our hearts and our minds. Help us to remember these stories. Help us to keep these words with us whenever we go. Please help us to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead so we can be saved. We just pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to God our Father in heaven. Amen and amen and amen. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next time.